All right. Sorry, guys. We went out because I was trusting Nepa, and Nepa decided to do what he did. I'm in Nigeria. He doesn't have that problem right now, so he doesn't know what I'm saying. What I'm saying is very alien to him. And <laughs> of course, I know. His baby. And God will let our generation not to see that. Okay, so uh, we're talking about your movement to Middlesbrough. Once again, you went to Middlesbrough. And now Middlesbrough was once upon a time a great club when they have Fabrizio Rabinali, Junio, and all that, Emerson and the rest of them, Robson as their coach, I think. And then you went to this Middlesbrough game. First game, once again, was a goalless draw. The Omirua magic came on board again. Because they were losing before that game. And then you showed up and yeah. finish it, no goal considered, the strikers were not scoring. So let us know what happened at Middlesbrough. Okay, at Middlesbrough, um, the coach was Aito Taranka. So he was best friends with uh, Jose Mourinho, the coach of Chelsea there. Yeah. So it was it was fantastic. I was playing every game. The fans loved me. You know, everyone loved me. But I didn't know he had a player that he trusts so much. And he's a Spanish guy. And he's been injured. So me coming in, he, I didn't know his player, you know, okay. had a knee injury. Yes. So I was playing. And the other guy I was playing with is uh, Ben Gibson. You know, the he's the the uncle owns the club, Middlesbrough. Yeah. So we're playing, you know, we kept a lot of clean sheets. It was a great season. And then I went to the World Cup. So in the World Cup, the coach was always writing me, you know, please, I need you. We need to, you know, promote the team. We need to do it next season. We want you in the team. Also, my management spoke to Chelsea and they were saying that, you know, um, Jose Mourinho wants me to go back because the, the coach already spoken to him that he wants me. So he told my management that the best would be for me to go back to Middlesbrough because them and Chelsea, they train the same kind of training and, yeah. you know, it's the same pattern. And then after that, I will be uh, coming to Chelsea. So, and me, I had a deal to go to QPR. And at that time, QPR was a Premier League team. So, but with all the fans on my Instagram, on my Twitter, all the pressure from, you know, Chelsea wanting me to go back to Middlesbrough. And I had a good season and I, have, I had a very good relationship with the manager. So I was like, you know what, let me go back. So I announced on my Twitter I was joining Middlesbrough back. So everyone was happy and I went. But then I think that was one of my mistakes. You know, um, I won't call it, well, we learned. No, but I, know, I, think, learned. I think, in my opinion, I think you did what is right, but human being decided to be human being. So it yes. would, it's, not, it's like, you know, it's like this thing people say, you love somebody and the person treats you wrongly and you're not saying it's your mistake. You, you're, you're never wrong for loving. You're right. You're never wrong. Yeah. Or, okay, let me give you, in this season, you know, we try as much as possible to give as much as we can give. And sometimes it's tough. The other day, it was crazy. John Ogu had to send me money from, from Saudi Arabia to give to some people. And then, you know, you can't give everybody. And you can't satisfy everybody. Yeah. And then somebody asked me for 1000 I gave him 5000 Another person asked me for 2000 And I, I checked his profile, see that he's got a family. I gave 10000 Longer short. Some other guy asked for money. And I told him, I don't have any money again. You know how you give people money codedly? They go and put it publicly. And then this guy just came in and was insulting me. I had all the money that I have. I'm, I'm doing wickedness. If it's arm robber that put, ask me for money now. <laughs> or it's kidnapper. I just... I just looked at the guy like, this guy doesn't even know that I don't have food to eat right now. Like, I'm like, hey, but I just choose to give. So that's your situation. You chose Middlesbrough because yeah. your fans have shown you love. You had a great season. You need to continue. So I don't yeah. think it was a mistake on your part. So what happened with the coach? Yeah. Um, so it became a situation where I play one game and the next game I'm on the bench. You know, so I went from being a regular just coming back from a very good World Cup that I played all the games to going to play one game on, one game off. And then sometimes two games I've not played. 
So it got in, it got into my head. I I I lost it, you know, and it it got to a situation where I was now on the bench. It, and it's not because I've made any mistake, you know. If it's because of that, then you know it's understandable. Okay, I will be like, well, next time I get my opportunity, I will take it, you know. But then something happened one game I played, and we were losing 2-0. And then at the start of the first half, so this was when I haven't played like three games in Alpul. So at the start of, and that game, he rested a lot of players because I think we had another game. But then at the start of the second half, he takes me out. Let's say 50-something minutes. So the board went up and I was being changed. So I I lost it. I was I was upset. And I went, I didn't even go to meet the guy coming in. I went straight into the tunnel, you know. And then Jonathan Woodgate was uh, one of our players. But he's now the coach of Middlesbrough. Yeah. So he came to me, he came to me to tell me to, you know, to come out that I'm young, that I should do it for my career, you know. And this this is an advice that I will forever be grateful because it has helped me a lot. It has helped me so much, even in the national team. Because I came out and then they made me apologize to the coach. But then even after apologizing, he That's, pulled me out. The damage is done. Yeah. He didn't take me to games. I was I was now not even making making into games. You know? And then one one time during the playoff period, we had a game. Woodgate that wasn't playing was now playing ahead of me, and I wouldn't travel. But then I've decided, you know what, I'll just train where and and all that. But then one game I was on the bench, and you know Woodgate was injured. Second half, we were winning uh, Wolves. It was a two zero, and then they equalized one back, and. Would get went down to be changed. I was surprised that he asked me to come in. So we had that game at two one, but I think I played my best game. The fans were writing me, you know, the the coaches was like that, you know, I was a, a good professional. Understand that I I was perfect fit, you know, I helped them keep that win, and then we qualified for the playoffs. But the next game, I was so confident that I was going to even play in that game. And when they made the list, I wasn't in the spot. Oh, God. You were caught <laughs> yeah. by a devil. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was bad. And then we had to go to, to London before the, before the playoffs final. Because we played the playoff final that year yeah. against Norwich. Against Norwich. So... They made it a list to go to camp in, in London and train in Arsenal facility before the game. Yeah. So I was in that squad. I was training, you know, happy that, you know, I'm going to play in the in the final of the of the playoffs. Yeah. And then do you know I was the only player that was not in the squad? After that saving that game against Wolves. Yeah, we went to and the thing is, we, we were in a meeting. I think the manager didn't realize how the traffic was in London. We were in a meeting for the game. The other team was already in the stadium. And we came in like 15 minutes to the start of the match. <laughs> if we, did, no, did your think, mind, did, think, did something in your head not go back to Nigerian League? Did it not happen like, that was, if, like by that Nigerian was, League again? I think that was why Middlesbrough didn't promote that year because we came down, um, in the dressing room. You know, everyone was in a hurry. Like, we need to go out to warm up. Everyone, you know, we had a short warming up. They just said, I'm the one not dressing. You know, I was like, okay. But one thing I did was I made sure my mom saw me on camera. But when the coach is coming out, I'm, I'm with my suit as well. So I'm walking out like in front of him, like I'm the coach. You know, came out, sat down, and watched the game. And the same defender was the one that made the mistake and they scored us twice. And wow. that was it. We lost in the final. Okay, so the so there is, there is, there is, I was in Brazil in 2014. I was at the World Cup. 
now there is this thing in my head, in my head, since we started going to the World Cup in 1994, the 2014 team is the best team. Our best chance ever. People think it's the 94 team that had the best chance ever to go further. But I was in Brazil. I saw that team. Our best chance ever. And I still think that if Onazi and I think it was Babatunde didn't get injured, we still yeah. would have beaten France. But that's not my focus. You know how you guys held the team ransom? If they don't pay you people your money, you will not play. That's that why we didn't win that game. So that's why we didn't qualify. There was this talk about you people counting money overnight, and I remember I was watching the game because I was on com- I was doing commentary for that match. I was watching the game, and in the second half, when Matthew Babuena started running, pulling strings, I started noticing. I'm a football player. I played football. I started telling my co-commentator, Emeka Odipo, that these guys didn't rest properly. They've been disturbed. They've been distracted. The way they play the group games, something is wrong. Yeah, even though these guys want to play the game, but something is already wrong. Now you are inside the camp. I'm, I, I made a guess. What actually happened? I think it's the issue with the money and everything. It wasn't handled properly. You know, I was a newcomer to the team. I didn't have any say. I thought I was just there. You know, <laughs> the big boys decide and we will follow because, you know, it's not like now that if, you know, they wanted to talk about money or anything. I'll be there to say something. Then I was just coming into the team, so I didn't have anything to say. I was just, whatever you guys decide, we will follow, you know. But I think the timing of everything was wrong uh, because we felt like, you know what, we've qualified. So now they have to pay us our money. I was all right. Traveling. Yeah. So, yeah, it is. It is, but... Another thing is, it is, but I think they they would have done like a meeting and agreed this ahead of time, rather than in the in the Middle tournament, the because because it would distract everybody. Okay, so in that same yeah. World Cup team, one thing that happened that shocked me when you guys won the Afcon in twenty thirteen. My player of the tournament was Brandy Day. Even though he did score goals, but to me... No, Ide is he's a beast. Ide he was for down, me... He and can I run s- down defenders. Is, I, I think it was the guy who got everybody going up front. He got Uche yeah. going, he got Emenike going, he got everybody going. Yeah. Victor yeah. Moses, he was the guy. He drew attention to himself so that other people have space. And then you guys went to Brazil. I mean, I was packing my bag to go to Brazil. It was my first chance to go to the World Cup that I didn't make as a player. Now I'm making it as a commentator. And I was, you know, it wasn't like the regular journalist where you know that your fate is tied to Nigeria. Once Nigeria loses, you're coming back. I knew before going to the World Cup that I'm going to stay to the finals. And then I look at this team. In, in 94, we're African champions. We went to the World Cup. 2013, we're African champions again. We're going to this World Cup. This must be the one we'll get to maybe quarterfinals or semifinals. So I, when they were doing the selection of commentaries, commentary games, I was making sure that I picked Nigerian games. Like, put me in the Nigerian game. I'd love be like, bros, put me in the Nigerian game. Because I know the history mm-hmm. of Nigeria at the World Cup. I would really do a good job. And then I saw the team list. Brandy Day was not there. And I said to someone, I'm not against Shola Amobi, but I don't think Shola Amobi even understand Nigeria. He doesn't even know if he's in Nigeria. I was happy that Osaze came back to the team. I mean, this guy is my guy. It's good he came back to the team. Experience, fight, and drive. After missing out of the nation's club because of what he did with his club. Do you think that that team would have done better with Brandy Day in the team? Uh, I, think, I think so because uh, Ide is, is a plus. You know, Ide, uh, Ide but in training, he, he can run. He is good with the ball. He provides assists, you know. But at the end of the day, as a player, you can't say anything. You're happy to be in the team. You know, I don't know what happened, why he didn't make the team. Uh, if it's for training, he trained well. You know, but at the end of the day, the decision is always for the manager and the, you know, the coaches to decide. You know, but right. he was right. he was good with us. He's my friend as well. You know, and uh, yeah. So let's fast track now to the rave of the moment. 
And there are some players that I need you to talk to me about your own understanding of these players. Uh, the rave of the moment in Nigeria, or the player that everybody is hoping, first Nigerian player that will hit the 100 million pounds transferred fee, first Nigerian player again in a long time that will score over 20 goals in a, in a league. Everybody is looking at Victor Sime. Oh, Sime. The little monster. That's what they call him in France now. Uh, when I spoke to Gianogu, Gianogu said that the fight in that boy is Wakanda level. And then I yeah. spoke to Judo Joe Gallo two days ago, and he said he's got a heart of a lion. Talk to me about Victor Simeon. Because right now, Manchester United, Chelsea, Barcelona, and Real Madrid are the names that we're hearing. Even Juventus and Inter Milan are the names we're hearing. You've been in this game now long enough. You're not a, what we, in football we call senior man. You're not a senior man in the, in the game. What's the advice you will give to Victor Sime right now? Like, with all these clubs coming, what's the advice you will give to him? Because he's still a kid. Yeah. Um, I think there is, there is nothing like, um, you know, we are different from the, the foreigners, like, you know, the Europeans. Yeah. They can decide if a team wants, let's say, Osima is a, is a is a Belgian player or a Spanish player or French player. If they want him or a French player, if they want him, and he says today, no, I want to stay in my team. Maybe next two seasons. In next two seasons, they will still want him. Do you understand? Yeah. But as an African player, if they want you now. You need to go now. Mm. You cannot say you cannot say you want to. It's like if I'm asked, why did you take the opportunity to sign to Chelsea? I cannot say, you know what, Chelsea can wait. Let me sign for, let's say, Stoke City, and build my way up. It might not happen for you the way wow. it will happen for a foreign player. Yes. So, if these guys, I, I know players that they will say, you know what, they will make a deal with the club and say, is this um, the guy in Atletico, is it what, what uh, he was bought? It's not, no. when I'm in the, when no, I'm in the field with him, yeah, when I'm in the field with him, I'm like, I don't even see him as that, he's not a threat to me. If you know what I mean. No, I, I do, I do. Yeah. But Sima is a big threat. You know, Osima is a big threat. And if a team wants him now and is a big team, I would say go. But still keep that same, you know, that same fight, that same drive. Still work hard. Don't feel you're there. When I was in Chelsea and going on loan, people were always asking me about Chelsea. And I say, no, I'm, ask me about the team I'm playing because I'm giving my 100% for this, this team, team, not for Chelsea. You know, I was very happy when I was bought by Leganes, you know, and it, it was it, it was a big deal for me. I was even happier than, you know, signing with Chelsea because I'm in the top league and I'm playing. It's not like, you know, I'm in a team where I will not be watched, you know, they won't see Kenneth. One thing I've always done is to make sure I play, even if I'm not playing in Chelsea, but I'm playing. So especially because I want to be playing for the national team. You know, when I was playing in Turkey, I wasn't called for some games because, you know, they felt... Nobody was Turkish seeing league. you. Nobody was seeing me. But I'm, in, I'm playing in La Liga now. And that also motivates me to do more because I know, you know, back home, Nigerians are watching, my fans yeah. are watching, you know, and... That's, that's just it. Okay, so finally, before I let you go, the Messi conundrum. And I, I, say, I think I have a few questions from, from your fans anyway. But before I go to the fans, mm -hmm. the Messi conundrum, Lionel Messi. You played against him wearing the Nigerian yeah. national team, JC. You played against him in, in uh, Leganes, right? Yeah. When you're preparing for a game against Messi, first, you just talked about your fellow now for Atletico Madrid. Like, it doesn't exist. <laughs> you seem to have my kind of attitude. You know, when I play, I like, 
this defender not the I beg, give me ball, my play ball. I want to enjoy ball, not mm. this defender. You understand? So, but when you want to play against Messi, has a preparation like look at this is a guy who can take out the entire defense. He's a sniper, he can take out your entire team. How do you prepare? Do you prepare with the mind of you know what? Let's do damage control. Uh, they will win also, but let's not make it a massacre. Or do you prepare and say, guy, or die and die. We die here today. How's the preparation? Yeah, that's 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 the attitude. You you cannot prepare for one player. Everyone knows Messi is the best in the world. You know, if Messi score you three goals now, no be news. Because he does it to the biggest clubs. Yeah. You understand? So we we always fight as a team, you know, defend as a team and try to get something out of it. You know, they won against us uh you know our in our home uh this season, but it was a close one. They won two one, you know. But it was a close one as well. And the goal was it was like a controversial goal because it was supposed to be offside and they said it's not offside because our player touched the ball before they scored it. But there are some things they give to the big team that if it's the small teams, it will be an offside, if you know what I mean. I always say that. I always say that. Yeah. I always yeah. say, when I'm analyzing, that's I'm how, like, that's... this thing is just like, I used to have my case study. Some of the call that go for them, before Stoke City or one of those lower West Ham, yeah. you will see the flag up. It's, it's normal. Yeah, definitely. So let me, let me take a few questions. I can't take all of them. And those of you guys who will watch it and I don't take your question, please don't be angry. It's just that sometimes I, one person will type this question. What's your apple, Isam? <laughs> guys, take it easy. <laughs> when you ask only one question. So from uh, Baba Wale Olayemi, he said, do you ever feel disappointed for not being able to make an appearance for Chelsea for close to seven years? This is disappointment. Oh. No, it's not a disappointment for me because uh, I achieved a lot of things being under that umbrella as a Chelsea player. You know, um, they made me take my family from where they were before, you know, to where they are now and also put me in a comfortable position, situation. So I, what I have is I thank them, but you know, I hope, like I said, I hope they regret it. And for them to regret it, I have to be at the top. Yeah. I have to, I have to, I have to play to, to the highest level. I have to be one of the best defenders, you know. So, and that's what I'm trying to do, work hard to achieve that. And nobody knows. Maybe I will be back there. You know, you never know. Yes, it's possible. Do you still look back now and say you are a Manchester United fan or you've changed your position? Are you no, still Manchester United? No. You're done. I'm not I'm not a Chelsea fan. Yeah, I spent the dead team now. Okay. Isaac. Yeah, Ch Ch Chelsea and uh, Leganes. Okay. Isaac Komola first said, What's your favorite Nigerian club and who's your favorite Nigerian player of all time? Hmm. My favorite Nigerian club. Please don't say him by your. I have to say him. No, you play for sunshine. No? How come I be saying him <laughs> by your? Zabu Zabu people. Yeah. No, but say what's your. Own. No, I um, to be honest. To be honest, I would say I would say sunshine because <laughs> him by I only I've not. I've, I don't feel that associated with them because I didn't yeah. play for them. Yeah. You know, I didn't live in the East. But whenever they win the league, I celebrate it because yeah. I'm from there. You know, but I think Sunshine gave me the experience of playing in the Nigerian League. All right, finally from Kalejaye Ibrahim. Kalejaye Ibrahim said you should list the top five most difficult players you've defended against in your career. Me, I would name one, Messi. Messi first. Name, yeah. the, name the other four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Benzema. Uh, Drogba. Ah, man, that guy is a beast. That guy is a devil. Yeah. I hate him. I love him and I hate him. <laughs> I'm an Arsenal fan, so you know why I, I hate him. But I love him because he's yeah. an African. 
Yeah. Uh, Balotelli. And uh, I think I'll say, I'll say Zeko. And is Zeko. Do you have any Balotelli yes. experience? Any Balotelli? Because the guy is, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I don't have any. I don't have any. You know what I mean, right? I know, I know. Ah, God. Balotelli and Diego Costa, I don't know the difference. Like, if I'm playing defense, I'm not a defender, but if I'm playing defense, what play against those people, I'll be like, let this guy I'm not go slap me. I'm not going to feel myself. I, I feel my time. Off. I don't think I've played against Costa. No, you haven't. He's always injured, injured when we play against him. Okay, so my, my, my final one that I want to take. Ah, uh, you know your mom. Your mom have a canteen, a restaurant. How good? Yeah, is used to. How good a cook is Kenneth? Because my mom used to serve food too, and I'm a good cook. Mm. Not because I want to be a good cook, but turn this too. Then miss this one. Put salt. That's how you become a yeah. cook. You yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Cut the yam. Peel and peel away. My friend, not be so that they peel yam. What do they do? You want somebody yam? No, I want sell yam. You know, before you yeah. know, you become a master chef. How good a cook is Kenneth in the uh, very, very, very good. Very good cook. I, I, <laughs> very good. So you can, if you can get a table on the show, he will, he will confess it. I see. My next chit chat is a, a table. He's, he's, a, my, he's a stone too. My next <laughs> chat is a table. I'm talking to him next. Okay. So, okay. so now, give us one dressing room moment. One moment in the dressing room. Of whether it's club or national team, that whatever you think about it, it that make you laugh or just it just give you some memories. One dressing room moment. Dressing room moment. I think the national team nations cup. Playing music from the bus to the to the dressing room and dancing and <laughs> yeah. I think that that would what, be the one. What kind of character is Kilichi Ihanacho in the dressing room? <laughs> no, he's 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 a he's a good guy. He's he's uh he's lively. You know, he's lively. And he's someone that the world might not have seen the best of Kilichi. I agree with you. I agree with you. But oh, yeah. see, this is my opinion about Kilichi Ihanacho, you know. I think that what Osima is doing now, working very hard, eh? I think that somewhere, I might be wrong, analysts mm. will do get it wrong, but from a footballer perspective, I think that Kelechi got to Man City and felt like it was going to be easy. Where is Ken? Okay. You know, and then he relaxed. I felt he relaxed somewhere because you cannot argue against his talent. His talent is awesome. That boy's yeah. left foot is amazing. And then he's... I know it was close, close to Kanwako, and then all of a sudden things just went up. But before coronavirus, it was beginning to pick his form again. I think one of the greatest yeah. things that happened to him was Genetro not taking him to the nation's club. So as I let you go, we're still debating whether to keep Genetro or not. If the powers are in your hand, would you fire Genetro or you will keep him? It's a very tough uh, it's question. Not, it's not in my hand. Thank God it's not in your hand, but if it was in your hand, <laughs> you would fire him or not. No, you know, um, I will not. Sorry. I will not. Good. So yeah, uh, because okay because because uh, you like him or not, you know he's producing results. Absolutely. If you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I do. So so I won't fire him um, because of personal reasons or but. Judge him on, you know, the results of the team. We and apart from that, football. apart from that, under him, the national team have been more stable than we have been in the last 10 years. Nobody yeah. is retired. I mean, players have retired under General Trump, Victor Moses, Judo Joy Gallo. But there is no quarrel. Before now, when players yeah. want to leave national team, there is fight. I have a problem with the coach. He did this. He's the... So... I think mm -hmm. the stability and then the pool of young players that we have right now, there's a perfect blend of experience and youth in a very stable way. This is my opinion. I might be wrong. Yeah. I think continuity is better. No, if, any new, if any new coach comes in, it's, it's going to take time to know the team, understand the players. Yeah, it's true. 
and then we will lose ground. We might lose the Nations Cup qualifiers or the World Cup qualifiers, and then we we'll start afresh again. So that's my opinion. Anyway. I think, I, yeah, I think the best is if you want to, if there is, well, I don't know, something might happen with contract agreement and all that. But I think uh, for me, bring someone and and add to him. You, you get what I mean? If yeah. you're, I think we have a lot of experienced coaches as well. But I think them working together with, will be better for us. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you very much for being on the chit chat. And thank you for reconnecting with us, even though the problem was on my side. That's very hard to do. And at this point, not knowing that you are going through the shoulder pain that you are going through, like I have 18 screw in my knee. And I remember when I stopped playing football, yeah. and people look at me like, this one, I forgot. Like, you just start telling where you don't play. Chaka. Because I used to have like colorful hair and that. Uh, don't entire but they need to play ball again. They didn't know that I was close to being amputated, that my career had ended. Because I didn't even tell anybody that my career had ended. I was ashamed to tell yeah. someone. I just play one season in Europe and my leg is off. And I, people used to sell those things then. I'll look at them, I'll go home, I'll cry, and I'll come out again, keep a bold face. We'll be Nigerians now. If you tell for your problem, mm -hmm. the user costs you. Keep a bold yeah. face, try to move on. So I, I apologize for judging you wrong, wrongly. And no, no. I'm, I'm grateful to God that you, you, you agreed to take that operation. Your game is top notch right now. Like you said, Thank you, very much. you want to prove, you want to make Chelsea regret it but you are going to do it by becoming a top-class defender. Lessons that I've learned in life is it is never over until it's over. Nobody would have thought that at exactly. 30, 30 going to 31, that's when Odion will play for Manchester United. But it is happening right now. Exactly. Right. And your story again yeah. has been very interesting. Nobody would have thought that you come back from the World Cup, a club who told you that they will give you 5,000, will not give you, they will offer you 1,000, 1,000 euros, and then you pack your bag and leave. And then, yeah. of all the clubs in the world, Chelsea will come for you. Even if you didn't get to play one season, the fact that from standard ledge you went to Chelsea, for me, is an inspiration. It also tells yeah. me that sometimes do not take rubbish just because make you forget food to shop. Sometimes just stand your ground. Thank you very much for inspiring yeah. me and inspiring my viewers. And I hope that as we go, we'll continue to have this chat other times. And I pray that when we're done with all these corona issues, we'll talk more about the games. And one of the chit chat that I will plan is immediately after you guys play Barcelona. And I will sit down and watch that game. Leganes, Barcelona, I'm waiting for it. And then we will have a talk. Whatever the game goes, we'll have a talk about it. But my regards okay. to your wife and your lovely daughter and everybody. Uh, let me run and go and catch all up right. to the table. Thank you very much. All right. Do you have okay. any message for your fans? Do you have any message for, for them? Um, I, I love you guys and uh, please, please wash your hands, stay indoors and uh, after all this, we will come back to enjoy the football that we all love. Thank you very much. God bless you, man. All right. Bye. Appreciate it.